Welcome to Inland Edition, where we have conversations with people who make decisions that affect our everyday lives. My name is Joe Richardson. I'm an Inland Empire resident, a local attorney, and your host. And today, we're going to chat with the mayor of Pomona, a true Inland Empire citizen having grown up in Pomona, giving his first impassioned speech during high school and graduating from the University of California, Riverside. Tim Sandoval has been community service oriented for a very long time. He helped found Bright Prospect, a mentoring organization that has helped more than 2,000 at-risk youth become first-generation bachelor's degree holders. As mayor of Pomona, he champions legislation aimed at inclusiveness, environmental sustainability, and fiscal responsibility. He's caring, he's hardworking, and he's forward-thinking, and it's time to meet him now. to welcome to Inland Edition, Pomona Mayor Tim Sandoval. Mr. Mayor, how are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Thank you for having me, appreciate oh, it. I'm glad to, to have you here. We'll talk about it, but Pomona is a gateway city for me, uh, psychologically. Uh, so it's really great to see you uh, come in so we can kind of talk about yeah. all things Pomona. So let's build a house a little bit. Tell me about, was there one moment that's like a aha, the, Clouds, you know, open up, the, the sun comes out, that puts you on the path to public service, or is it a series of moments? Well, I, I wanted to say there's, there's two that I really can think of. And uh, before I became mayor, I co-founded a nonprofit called Bright Prospect. And one of the things that we used to do is these things called college decision days, mm -hmm. where all of our high school seniors announced where they were going to college in the fall. And we'd have our younger students there from our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. Parents would come out, administrators would come out. And I remember the mayor at the time came up to me and he put his hand out and I grabbed his hand and I said, hello, mayor. He says, do you know who I am, right? And I already acknowledged that he was the mayor. He goes, he goes, I'm the mayor and I'm always gonna be the mayor. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I said, hey, listen, mayor, all the best to you. I've got some work to do. And as the students were announcing where they were going to college in the fall, Harvard, Cal Poly Pomona, UCLA and Berkeley, I thought about what it would mean for them to come back to a community like Pomona with a mayor like that. Mm. And it really was the beginning of building a team. And this was in 2012. The next election was in 2016. And I said to myself, we can do better. Pomona can do better. And I decided to run for mayor in 2016. He was a 20 year incumbent, a two term mayor. And uh, by a landslide victory, we beat him. Wow, that's amazing. So that's one moment. Is there another yeah, well, one? Well, there was actually one after, but because okay. uh, it was important. It, it, so, so shortly after I became mayor, I also was elected at the time when a new president was elected. Sure, okay. okay. And there was a lot of deep fear in the community mm -hmm. about Homeland Security coming in and breaking up our families. Sure. And one of, our, uh, one of my supporters said, Mayor, there's uh, an event happening over at the local high school and they're really concerned. Families are really concerned about their safety. And uh, so I went out there and what I said was, Pomona will not cooperate with any federal agency that undermines our families and community. Mm -hmm. We will not support it. We will not cooperate with those agencies. And then the next question was, Mayor, what are you gonna do about my alleyway? <laughs> and yeah. it, just, it just reminded me of, well, you're sometimes dealing with very big issues, sure. national issues. At the end of the day, people in this particular case, she wanted her alleyway clean. And all I told her, I said, listen, I'll meet you halfway. You get your family, you get your neighbor, and I'll join you out there and we'll clean that alleyway. And that alleyway remains clean to this very day. Oh, wow, that's great, that's fantastic. So you've got the perspective of being connected to Pomona for a very long time, yeah. starting from being a child, right? Yes. Tell me, you know, what you'd want us to know about your observations, how it's changed over the years. Yeah. So my parents moved there uh, in 1980, right. bought, bought their first home. They had always been renters. They had never imagined themselves owning a home. And they, pay, they bought this home for $57,000 in 1980. And I didn't know anything except that I now had a yard. Sure. I had, there was a tree house, right? 
And my parents owned this home. And what I didn't really realize at the time is that I had the fortune of coming at a time where Pomona was becoming more diverse. There were families who had fled the civil wars in El Salvador and Guatemala, Vietnam, Cambodia. Wow. There was already a large African-American population there. So when I was going to school there, my classmates really represented, if you will, the world. And I didn't fully understand it at the time, but I had such rich experiences by getting a chance to meet a lot of people who had very different experiences. And so, so that was, so when I landed in Pomona, it was, it was great. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize some of the economic challenges that would come later on. And so when I think about that time, right, where it was even that much more diverse to today, uh, Pomona is 70% Latino. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a very working class community, large immigrant community, still has, uh, uh, still has diversity in many respects, uh, socioeconomic diversity. And so where I see it from that time to where we're at now is, is really just the change in the demographics of the city. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but but I, I, st I think people still see it as a place for hope and opportunity yeah. because not everybody can afford to live in the wealthiest communities. Mm -hmm. And yet Pomona provides a place for people at a reasonable, at a reasonable rent or a reasonable uh, mortgage rate, if you will, or mortgage, I should say, uh, to, to, to buy a home in the city. So speaking of what you do as a, a mayor, want to talk about that some. You know, a lot of folks will know that the mayor tends to be the head of a city, right? <laughs> you know, the person that is an ambassador yes. for the city. But take us through uh, what it means to be mayor, wh what you do, and uh, the infrastructure for the city of Pomona, the city council, yeah. et cetera. Well, give us, give us the, the view on that. Yeah. So we're a council manager form of government. Okay. Uh, we have a full-time city manager that leads the team. Uh, the council is a paid part-time position. Currently in Pomona, there are seven seats. It's the mayor who's elected citywide and district council members. So they're elected in a district. One of the advantages that I have is that I have an amazing wife who frees me up to be a full-time mayor. It's not paid full-time, but it frees me up. And it's really easy as a mayor to get caught up in the weeds, and the weeds are important. Sure. They're meaningful things to people. I want my street repaved. I want potholes, uh, re I want potholes to be finished. Uh, I want my parks to be safe and clean. But I've also found that as mayor, it's important to step out of it and to really have vision and to really think about what is the city going to look like 15, 20 years from now because of the decisions and the plans that we've made today. I think what happens sometimes is that you just, you're so caught up in trying to address what is today, almost being reactive, that we lose sight of what's important to be able to transform a city like Pomona, which historically has had, had some real social and economic challenges. Uh, but I'm excited for that because what I think Pomona will look like 10, 15 years from now is that it'll even be that much more prosperous and it'll have a bigger impact, particularly on our young people. What would you say to someone that you want to educate about Pomona, something that they just don't know? An yeah. aha for them. Did you know that Pomona was X or Y or Z? Yeah. What would you tell them? Yeah, you know, you know so um, Pomona's a city that serves more than itself, okay? You have an injury in... Claremont or Laverne, you don't go to those cities. You go to Pomona Valley Hospital. Sure. You have a traumatic brain injury and you live in Walnut. You don't go to Walnut. You go to perhaps you go to Casa Colina Hospital. Yes. And while there might be folks who want to send their children to the Claremont Colleges or a selective private college, we have Cal Poly Pomona, which not only serves Pomona, but serves the entire state, in fact, the country. DMV, Social Security, Right? And it also provides a place for people to live who perhaps they would love to live in some of the foothill communities, but they can't afford it. And they need a place to live. So the people who are housekeepers, our factory workers, warehouse workers. So I'm incredibly proud of the role that the city of Pomona plays in the region because it's one of the biggest, in fact, it's the largest city in the San Gabriel Valley. And it's one of the largest cities uh, in LA County. It's the seventh largest city. Mm -hmm. So it plays such an important role in people being able to reproduce themselves, go out and work and contribute to the economy. And so I'm proud of that. And if you want to see a concert at the Glass House, you want to go to the uh, Fox Theater or go to the galleries or some really great restaurants, uh, it's, it's a place. And of course, I, I shouldn't forget that it's also home to the LA County Fair. Yeah. Uh, so right. long before there was Amazon, you can go to the fair and buy your, uh, all your goods that people yeah. perhaps couldn't buy at a store. And right. of course, it's home to the NHRA. 
Uh, we just celebrated uh, in and out 75th anniversary. Uh, I was kind of teasing the mayor of Baldwin Park. It was founded in Baldwin Park, but we're partying in Pomona. <laughs> That's pretty good. I want to talk a little bit about schools. Uh, Pomona, a town of 160,000, a big small city or a small big city, however you <laughs> want to put that. But you used the schools. You grew up in yeah, the schools yeah, in Pomona. Yeah. And so tell me about the schools. Is there one major school district? How much is there in the way of charter schools, parochial, you know, those yeah, types of yeah. things? Give us the framework on that. Yes, yeah, so I'm a product of Pomona Unified School District. Right. Uh, my father was a school teacher right. in Pomona Unified. Uh, right. So, so I'm, my, heart, my heart is with, with, with the school district. Sure. I'm um, very thankful. Uh, so... Uh, we have multiple high schools, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we have uh, a, a charter school called the School of Arts and Enterprise, okay. uh, which is really focused in on business and the arts, sure. uh, which adds a real compliment to the school district. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, the work that I had the opportunity to do with the Bright Prospect is there's so much talent sure. in the community. Yeah. Uh, some hardworking folks at the district, the teachers, the administrators, um, and, one of the things that I'm really excited for is the collaborative work that we're doing with the school district. Uh, we're currently working on a, a shared use agreement that would allow our residents to use the tracks at the schools because people are looking for access to opportunities to, to walk, to run, uh, to spend time with uh, family, their children. And so the idea would be to open up the schools um, so that community could use those areas. And uh, so really happy to see that happening. But I will tell you that kids who are coming out of Pomona are doing some pretty amazing things at, in college, in the military, going and working and doing some vocational work. And a lot of them are doing them right here in the Inland Empire. Tell me about the opportunities that you take for collaboration with other area cities. You yeah. know, often, you yeah. know, mayors are part of a league of cities or, you know, different organizations. Tell me about the, the, the things that join you guys together yeah. and some of the things that you work on together. Yeah, so I have the privilege of serving on a number of regional boards. I serve on the Metro Board. Uh, I serve on the Foothill Gold Line, uh, the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments. And w I'll just give you one example. There's a lot of examples where we're working together around the uh, addressing the unhoused population, transportation. But I still remember when um, the Gold Line Construction Authority put out bids to get the Gold Line to Montclair from Azusa Glendora. Mm -hmm. And they came back and we did not have the funding to get it from Tapona. Mm -hmm. And so we organized a group of cities that included Claremont, Montclair, residents, and we went down to the Metro Board. I wasn't on the Metro Board at the time. And we went down to the Metro Board and said why it was important to get it to Pomona and ultimately to Montclair. And um, we needed $126 million. Mm. We were able to secure by unanimous vote of 30 cities from the San Gabriel Valley to allocate $126 million to complete the gold line that was, had funding to Laverne, but needed a, an additional 126 million to Pomona. How significant is that? Yeah. Right? Jobs, right? what that means for Pomona residents, being able to get to places like uh, Sierra Madre, Pasadena, downtown Los Angeles. That was the result of collaborative work that happened with multiple cities. And there are these agencies that are specifically set up to do that. So we've worked with the cities on uh, addressing homelessness. Uh, one of the things I'm incredibly proud of in the city of Pomona is we're committed to building affordable housing. You will not see protest. Uh, you will not see nimbyism in the city because there's a recognition that people need housing and they need affordable housing. Uh, so we continue to inform other cities about the work that we do to address it. And uh, so I can, I, can, I can say there's a real collaborative culture even regionally uh, around these issues uh, from, uh, like I said, our homelessness to transportation. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's just some of the work that we've done that's as huge. a region. That's huge. So housing, of course, is a big thing as it yes. would be everywhere. What are some of the other challenges that you see that are constantly there? Yeah. You know, I remember as a kid riding my bike on Holt Avenue. And it wasn't unusual for me to see women walk in the streets, primarily women. Mm -hmm. And it's 2023, and I still see it. 
And I think to myself, what have we been doing the last 50, 60 years to address this problem? And the reason I raise it is because cities like Pomona sometimes face what we call intractable problems, mm -hmm. right? They're just long standing problems. We're not going to solve those intractable problems as a city doing it by ourselves. And so I'm convinced that the only way that we do it is we bring people together, multiple stakeholders together, so that perhaps because of the things that we're doing today, it looks different 10, 15 years from now. Otherwise, when I'm 70 year old man and I'm walking down Holt Avenue, it's gonna look the same and it shouldn't. It shouldn't because we're taking the steps now, right? To have a vision and to have a plan to end it. Mm -hmm. But I know the city can't do it by itself. And that was one of the things that was really important for me to understand is that the city, can't, they can take care of a pothole. They can work to repave streets. They can work to try to clean up our parks. But when it comes to those social issues, they really have to reach out. And that's not always easy for cities to do because they're so overworked and sometimes overwhelmed. But to really solve these problems, they have to step out of that silo and work with others. That's the only way we're going to be able to solve these problems. Tell me about something that you would want citizens to know, citizens of Pomona. This yeah. is now, now the show's for everybody in the Illinois. Yes, Empire. yes, 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 but, yes. But tell <laughs> the citizens of Pomona something that you would want them to know that's available to them that's probably underutilized. Yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, happens every second Saturday is there's all these, so there's the galleries that are open, the restaurants that are open, the wine bar, uh, there's concerts, and there, there's probably over 100 vendors that come out with food, with crafts, with plants. This is every second Saturday, and there's thousands and thousands of people that come out, right? And a lot of them are from Pomona, but a lot of them are from the region. So I invite, I invite all of you in the Inland Empire to come on out to Pomona on a second Saturday, have a wonderful time, bring your family, and you will have a great time at it. Let's talk about resources in terms of how you connect with uh, national government, state government, yeah. and even county government. Tell me about how you uh, connect uh, not only from a resource standpoint, but from a collaboration standpoint. A lot yeah. of times we don't know what category. Somebody knows that they need yeah. something, yeah. right? But it might be a federal thing. It might be a state thing. How do you guys all converge in terms of you <laughs> making provisions, providing for people? We're mostly successful in that area. <laughs> you know, in politics, not everyone always gets along, right? right sure. That's part of the reality of it. But I, I, I will tell you that um, often the entree of a mayor or a council is with the staff of the senator sure. and the assembly member and the county supervisor. Yeah. Uh, I've been privileged enough to know an amazing supervisor in Hilda Solis, uh, Senator Leva, and of course, uh, assembly member Rodriguez. And if we want to get things done, we know that we have to work together. Sure. And so the more that they know about what our needs are is the better they can help us. I'll give you an example. Uh, we're uh, currently in the process of a design of an all abilities playground, mm -hmm. uh, which will be the second all abilities playground in the city, in our civic center, which is right next to our library. So when I talk about this work around zero to five is creating this space for our families to come and to bring their children. Senator Aleva and her team helped us procure uh, over a million dollars to help build that, uh, that park. It's in design phase. It should be finished in two years, mm -hmm. but that's because it's in many respects, it's a very relational thing. Mm -hmm. You've got to build those relationships, right? It, it, it isn't as if you just say, just because they're the electeds and I'm the elected, something, somehow something's supposed to happen. You really have to invest in people. And I can say that they were highly invested in Pomona. I would argue that their hearts were in Pomona. Sure, there you go. <laughs> and uh, consequently, we were very successful at procuring funds. Uh, one of the other things that was really important to us, and Assemblymember Rodriguez was um, helpful to the city, is to bring funds in to help us with our unhoused population, which allowed us to create a heart team that was made up of our PD, uh, also our public works to address encampments, but also mental health specialists, sure. right? Because we wanted to make sure that we approached our unhoused population with compassion, not criminalize folks for being unhoused. They're human beings 
It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, one could argue it's a human rights issue to be able to have access to housing. And so we've approached it with that same level of compassion, but it would not have happened without our legislators. Let's talk about civic engagement. There's, you know, when people are living life, right, you know, you've got a lot of working class, regular folks that yeah. do extraordinary things to keep their heads above water, to raise their families, et cetera. Often with that, you know, if someone is, you know, worried about putting gas in their car yeah, and getting back yeah. and forth to work, sometimes it makes them less civically engaged. <laughs> but the issues that are going on around yeah, us and yeah. the fact that the things that are going on with our elected representatives and the folks that elected you, it reminds us that it's all the more important yeah. for us to be civically engaged right, right. when things are difficult and tough. Yeah. Talk to the folks to encourage them about the notion of civic engagement, sure. not despite what they're seeing and going through, yeah. but because of it. You know, a great question. Um, I think that far too often there's a fraction of the community that see government as a transactional relationship. Mm -hmm. Government, I'm paying you taxes. You have to do this, 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 and that, right? Sure. And while there is some truth to that, that it's important that your taxes are being used to address the things that are important to you, I think it's somewhat problematic to see government as a transactional relationship mm -hmm. as opposed to a transformational relationship, yes. which is we all have an important role to play to create a healthy democracy. I don't believe democracy is even possible if it's just, just a few people mm -hmm. who are engaged in it. Mm -hmm. Everyone, to the degree they can, needs to step up and take ownership of their communities. And that's not easy. Some people are working hard. They don't have the time or the energy, but perhaps we still find ways for them to contribute, right? I uh, started up this group called Pomona Beautiful, and interestingly enough, they're working out this morning, this very morning, I usually go out and clean. And we just pick up trash in the community. We sweep the sidewalks, we sweep the gutters, and it's all volunteer-based, right? And it's basically sending the message that we all have a responsibility to create community. Mm -hmm. And so as a mayor, I try to find ways with others to bring people in to contribute to that. And I still remember one day, I was cleaning a street off of Holt Avenue, and there was a little boy, no more than eight years old, with his broom, sweeping up the trash. Not a part of this effort, mm -hmm. but was just doing it, and his dad was doing it as well. And transferring that that, that, that important, you know, you call it civic engagement. There's varying levels of civic engagement, but one of them is that young man getting out there and sweeping his neighbor's sidewalk. How do you um, deal with... I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a time where there's always tough times, yeah. right? But when things are tough, they can be really tough. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you've had a lot of moments where as mayor, as a person as a dad, as a husband, yeah. you know? Sometimes you were just on the front lines when things happen. Um, how do you get through yeah. a tough time? I have an amazing wife mm -hmm. uh, who grew up in Pomona as well, and uh, I lean on her a lot. Uh, but I also know that um, I don't know everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. And I surround myself around a lot of really bright people who, uh, who I turn to. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a saying, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's times when you got to reach out for help. That's right. Uh, and I'm a huge believer in that. I, I see it as a, some, sometimes people interpret that as a weakness, whereas I see it as a strength. That's right. Right. And um, so I'll, I'll, I'll call uh, people, uh, other electeds. Uh, I'll call my commissioners uh, and say, what do you think? Uh, this is a situation we face. Do you have any thoughts? Do you have any ideas? And um, at the end of the day, I'll make a decision. We'll figure it out. But I don't do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I just, I've just learned that uh, it, I, I'm a lot more effective when I'm, when I'm listening and I'm learning from others so that I make good decisions. I will make an assumption that people are looking at this and they're inspired, folks in Pomona, yeah. folks in the area. And, tell, uh, tell, 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 them, tell them to move to Pomona. That's right. Yeah, tell, tell, tell move to Pomona. <laughs> so I was going to say. Come set up your business in Pomona. <laughs> yeah. Give us some homework about how people follow up with the city, with you, yeah. knowing what's going on, knowing how to get plugged in, how to get involved, and, and how to find out more information. Yeah. So uh, one, of the, one of the things, and I talked about the second Saturday, if you go down, uh, just if you put down uh, Pomona downtown, 
uh, you will find out all the activities that are happening in the downtown area. So that's one way. Uh, and then, of course, uh, on our city website, uh, if you go to our city website, uh, you will find a list of activities as well uh, that you can access. Uh, typically, what I do is I give everyone my number. Right. <laughs> but I think maybe it might not be a good idea to perhaps do it on a television show. <laughs> but I, I, I share my number widely. Right, sure. uh, but si si if you want to email me, if you have an idea, if you have a question, uh, please, please email me uh, and, and come visit us. Uh, there's a lot of great things to do. And I would imagine a lot of people have done it already because they've gone to the fair yeah. or they've gone to the a classic car swap meet or maybe they saw a race. Uh, yeah. at the uh, Winter Nationals, uh, but uh, come, come, if you're watching this, come visit Pomona. There's a lot of really great things happening, and we'd love to have you. Mayor Tim Sandoval, thank you so much for yeah. being with us today. We appreciate it. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. And we want to thank each and every one of you for uh, watching us here. You can catch this on YouTube. Uh, you can let everyone know uh, that there are extra scenes as well that you'll find extra information. But until then, let's keep walking down the road, building bridges, one conversation at a time. Until next time, we'll see you. Thank you.